Welcome to the new podcast, A Mick, A Mook, and A Mike, hosted by four-time Emmy-nominated producer, Frank Pace, with retired New York City firefighter and Vietnam vet, Billy O'Connor. Today's guest, actor, James LaShore. My brother. My brother Frankie. How you doing today, pal? How Good. you doing? How are you doing today? How's your waggle? All right? It's still there. <laughs> it's still hanging in. 120 this week in Palm Springs. You know what I read the other day? That uh, Death Valley. It was Wednesday, I think. Death Valley was 131 degrees and it was the hottest spot on the planet. Yeah. I mean, hotter than that food desert. Outside, outside of hell. Outside, outside of hell. hell. Yeah. Which is someplace I'm going. <laughs> well, you go to hell. <laughs> what is it, Twain <laughs> said? You go to hell for the company, you go to heaven for the climate. That's where all my buddies are. Well, if I go to heaven, I want the money buddy. Speaking of good company, we got great company today. James LaSure. James sure. LaSure. Come on. Come on, Frankie. How, how do you know me? Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh, that feels good. That feels good. You notice the guys from the East Coast, they always put a wire. I know where it is. There's no matter what it is. Jimmy Leisure. Joey, a, Frankie, Johnny. A, a terrific, terrific, terrific actor. Bless your heart. Just a great actor. Well, he's got sure. some resume, I can tell you that. The guy's done a lot of work. Either he's a good actor or somebody doesn't know what the... A lot of people don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> I can act like a good actor. Man. That's what it is. <laughs> So, James, I want to ask you first thing. What did you drive here today? Uh, at least a Highlander, Toyota Highlander. It's still the same guy, you know what I mean? Just so well, modest. Well, I, I know that you're the same guy because uh, you were so frugal <laughs> when we were doing For Your Love that you drove. You know, I think you got a picture of it, right? You no. Drove, you drove a, 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 a low red <laughs> <laughs> and he drove it for year one. Year two, yeah, yeah. And year three. Come on, man. We need a couple of milk crates under the thing, you know, <laughs> to work it out. That wasn't far off, man. That was amazing. <laughs> but I did have a, t a tire issue the first year for your love. That's funny. Yeah, because, uh, you know, every, it's, uh, on, on a series that's successful, and For Your Love was on a year for four years. Woo! It was a really good, successful show. You, the, you, the actors show up for pilots. With sort of broken down cars. Yeah, right. Cars. Yeah, yeah. And then by the uh, by the beginning of season two, when we got a pickup, we're driving Mercedes. It's a car lot. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a car lot, all except James Lejeune. He wrote, wrote the same raggedy piece of crap. Smart guy. He wasn't the buying into the car lot and broken no, dreams. Eh? No, 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 no. This, Fuck uh, that. This business is way too finicky for all that Smart stuff. Move, from man. my, you know, from my point of view. So James. Uh, before we start, or as uh, I'll jump into the middle of the interview, uh, our favorite movie is The Godfather. Okay. Okay. So why don't you tell us what it was like playing Mike Cannon opposite <laughs> opposite James Caan for three years in Las Vegas for, for four seasons? Four, four we got to work together, and uh, it was intimidating the whole time. Well, really? How so? Yeah. Just because I mean, he's got an aura about him that's real. You know, that yeah. it's sort of I get where that you know it comes from in the movie, and he sort of carries himself. That way in real life too. But in addition, though, he's also like a teddy bear, super bright, super funny, and a thousand stories. So it was, it was a pleasure to work with. You know, Jimmy Kahn actually was at uh, Gotti's trial. You know, when Gotti was being Look tried, he was there every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, he's a big fan. I mean, the, the mob is a big fan of Jimmy Kahn because they love the way he portrayed Sonny in, in oh, The funny. Godfather. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, to, me, to me, I thought he was great in The Godfather because. To be honest, I grew up with a lot of those hot-headed guys. Right. Like hot-headed kiddies, you know, like they get eh. Nah, super believable. Like this thing, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and then the, the guinea smoker jacket, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, nah. He was terrific. Why you got to be guinea? I mean, Why he can't was a guinea. They were guinies. Why can't he be Italian? Why got to be guinea? What is a guinea? What is a mick? And what is a mook? I know what a mic <laughs> is. But what's a guinea? What's a guinea? That's a slang, a derogatory term for an Irishman. Okay. All right, that's We used to, we used to, you know, cook Mickey's, which was a baked potato. And oh, they okay. stick a Mickey on the thing, so they used to call us Mix, because we were always eating potatoes, you know? I'll dig it. And what culture is that again? Irish. I'll dig it. Okay. Yeah. And he's the mook. Who's that? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you can tell him what that is, it was right? It's Italian for genius. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's Italian for genius. What a compliment. 
the, the original title of the podcast was supposed to be Two Mooks and a Mic, but Two Mooks and a Mic was already taken. So his wife Jenny came up with a great idea. Why not a Mick, a Mook, and a Mic? That which works. Left, which left me being a Mook. That works. That works. That works. It's lyrical. I like it. That's so, a small fault in a good man, Frank. You know, it's no big deal. You know, then a guinea. Forgive my ignorance. for time. Oh, okay. Like you That's call also it. a mook or a guinea. It's almost in the same yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. A mook right. would be a stupid guy. <laughs> yeah, they double down on you, Frank. Oh, Look that, at his face. You see that man? He goes like this. I said, a mook would be a stupid He goes. <laughs> you got jokes now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me like I was a piece of shit that mm-hmm. wouldn't flush. He gave me one that looks, you know. You're going to hop into his godfather bag and then you're going to take it easy. <laughs> say take it easy. I'm friend. done. <laughs> what are you saying? Done. Done. <laughs> To you to win. Done. <laughs> so this is about this is about our forty fifth podcast. Congrats! Uh, I think you're the first guy we got that grew up in Los Angeles. Yeah, born and raised. This is my first podcast. Podcast. Really? This is. This we're is, we're honored. This is yo. Thank you. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Virgin territory. I'm here now. I'm glad you're my first, Frank. You too, Billy. Oh, could be. We could be your first virgin too, with the way it looks like virgin territory here. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with it, man. I'm gonna go. With, you know, give me a drink at least. Where did you go to high school? Uh, I grew. I graduated from Narbonne High School in Harbor City. Uh, Gaucho for life. And you were the captain of the football team there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Played a little no, football. Man. No, I was too fragile for all that. I did play basketball. I was uh, on the uh, varsity basketball team. I'm proud to say. And you still play basketball? Uh, less now. I'm more of a tennis guy now. I I, I love this, this ten, sport. A, ten, a, a tennis guy. T- hey, take it easy. Come on, I'm Hollywood now. He's baby. Hollywood. Baby. He's yeah. time now. He's playing tennis. You know what they call tennis guys <laughs> in, in, in our neighborhood, right? Mix. <laughs> I don't know. Daisies? Hey, I don't hey, know. Daisies? Hey, I believe on a podcast. Well, yeah, I believe on a podcast. You can say anything. Right? Yeah, 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 she can say anything. I hold say back it. there. Well, we're things. big on the First Amendment here, brother. Let's anything go. you want to say. Let's I, still go. Have, I still have to hold back on. Because <laughs> he will say anything. This is going to put me on a leash every now and then. He told me that. He said, what do you think I'm going to tell you to lose something? Girl? I believe that James, no. James is a terrific basketball player. Because uh, I brought you out to play with Artis Gilmore one time. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. Uh, Otis Birdsong's Fantasy Camp. Yeah, 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 man. And, that's still, and I uh, think you guys won, didn't you? I, I probably. You know, I like to think. Probably. I, I, I carry a winning tradition wherever I go. So I'd like, if, if we if we lost, let's just say I won. You know what I mean? Hey, Otis had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no. Hey, that was a thrill. You, you yeah, that's have a, what I mean. That uh, picture of uh, James. <laughs> All right, hey, that's a legit pick. Yeah, okay. Pick. Yeah, and I used to I used to root for the Suns at that time when they had Steve Nash. He was one of my favorite players when he played for the Suns. Who's that you're posting up or going around? Uh, is that that looks like is that Tank? I know uh, it's the R and B artist Tank used to go to these things in uh, Phoenix. What a thrill, man! We got to play in front of thousands of people. Well, yeah, like, it must have been halftime because there wouldn't have been us people in the crowd. If no, 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 yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Not, not, no, actually, that Suns team was dope. That was a uh, D'Antoni Suns team, so that was exciting. Yeah, they, that was good basketball. Then. And James has got possibly the ugliest jump shot still in the history of the still. world. <laughs> still. <laughs> And Frank will let me know. It's, the first time he saw it, he was like, "Yo, that is awful, yo." It's it's sort of like, it's like this, <laughs> or like this. <laughs> or, it's not even Jamal. Jamal used to yeah, come yeah. around and do that, but it's worse than that. I listen. I so during my research. I said, said that you were the MVP of the entertainment league. Is that, that on did the happen. level? That did happen. You would show yeah. you were the MVP twice, twice, Billy. Twice, twice Billy. But, I mean, you know who's coming? that? Where you guard forward? Uh, uh, point guard. Point guard. I, I'm, you know, I, I like to think I was sort of like a good distributor, and I can help sort of rally the troops. That I was great, um, great at. Speaking of which, thanks again for your service, Vietnam vet. I got the utmost respect and appreciation for you, for you both. But uh, awesome. next level. Oh, thank you, man. Awesome. 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 Also, a first, also a first responder at 9 Come on, that. come on, man. Yeah, well, yo, even, <laughs> even more of an honor to be here well, with you. No, it's you, my man. honor. Also, I believe me. Also a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> a gambler. A gambler. Uh, oh, yeah. a, a bookie. Enjoy your life, a man. Live a full life. A bar life. owner. <laughs> yeah. Another Irishman famously said that the only thing I couldn't resist was temptation. <laughs> <laughs> Good, and that's pretty true. And that's at 58 true. years old, he went back to college and got a degree at uh, got Sobered a degree up, in journalism. Got a degree in journalism at 62. Yo, come on, that's why I'm not here. I came out here. I 
came out here with a dream and I ran into him. This is the result. This is the result. Look at all this. Feels good to me, man. Oh yeah, it's all good, man. It's hey, every day's a gift, man. You know, I'm seventy three. Seventy three, and uh, right, you get up, you're vertical, nothing hurts. Come you on. don't read your name in your bitch, you shave. <laughs> right? That's the gift. <laughs> you just pay for go. little things, little victories, you know. For real, man. Yeah, maybe still got some lead in my pencil. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. Yeah, my pencil is becoming uh, more and more unpredictable, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm upset by this. I don't know. They, they're saying this is the aging process, but yo, brother, you know, like, I, <laughs> I don't have a confidence in my number two. Let me tell you. Come on, man. So you went you went to USC out of Norbon? I did. I did. I actually, um, right after high school, I went to the military for you. I went to the Air Force Academy Preparatory School in uh, Colorado Springs. I did 10 months of that. I, I took to it poorly. I liked it very little. So I was like, well, if I'm not going to pursue this, what am I going to pursue in my life? And it turned out I, I, I just uh, chose acting. And so I went to junior college for a year, El Camino Junior College here in L.A., and then I went to USC. What drove you to Colorado Springs to begin with? Are you an army brat? Or no, no, no. Uh, they were paying, you know, it was the uh, a sort of training for to become officers in the military, and they pay you to get an education. And so my folks, you know, were strapped for money, couldn't afford a, a, a semi to college. And I wanted to get away from the house a little bit. And so it just sort of worked out for yeah, you know, you. Over an opportunity to get away. And it's get like, I, I don't care where I'm going, but I'm getting yeah, out of here. Right. Yeah. I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing. In fact, I was sort of influenced by the. The movie Officer and a Gentleman, because I just loved the way Richard Gere lived, uh, looked in that suit. And I was like, yo, <laughs> I'm about to give me one of these suits. <laughs> as soon as I get there, it's the worst uniform you can imagine. I was like, wait a minute, I've been doing And so that, you know, that was the beginning of my uh, sort of breakup with the military. And you, from there, you went to USC School of Dramatic Arts? I did. Theater program, the BFA program there. Uh, and I graduated in 95. Yeah. So um, well, I'm really interested in your little stint in England when you went to Canterbury. Really, yeah, yeah, I'm that really happened. In that. And uh, you, Shakespearean actor too, a little bit of uh, uh yeah, Macduff and Othello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said. That was a that was a theater company here in Los Angeles that I joined after uh, uh USC. It was the New One Act Theater Ensemble. It's, it still may be here in Hollywood. Uh, they normally did um. Uh, original plays, but one every once uh, a year they would do something classical, a uh, classic, and so we did um, Macbeth that year, and, and that was a thrill. But in uh, the England thing happened while I was at USC because I, I was so full of myself, you know, I had so much confidence going into USC. I was like, all right, I'm going to be here for two years. I'm going to get discovered, and I'm going to get out of college. And so two years came, and nobody was checking for me, and so I got really sort of frustrated. Uh, uh, but there was an opportunity uh, through through school to go into the overseas study program in, in England. And so I was like, well, since nobody's checking for me here, let me go and do something over there. And so I just hopped over there for a year, got to do plays and stuff in England. And That's it was great, a great man. experience. Yeah. But you really had that wanderlust. I mean, you didn't care where they were sending you. Just get the hell out. Nah, you wanted to see it all. Yeah. Yeah. See it all. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you got to Vietnam. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> how I got to Vietnam. <laughs> no, seriously. That's, that's, that's the truth. I was 18, no money, growing up right. in the Bronx. It was 1966. Right. And I said, well, I can't go to college. My old man got no money. You know, right. like... Uh, it's either go to work or, uh, you know, join the service. Yeah. And I said, well, at least if I go to Vietnam, I, I got a chance to fight back. You know, yeah. my old man, it's just this guy just beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> just ain't working. So, yeah, exactly right. I just wanted to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Send me anywhere. And yeah. you discovered sex. Well, yeah, when you're 18 in the Bronx, <laughs> the women you're fooling around when you're 18 in the Bronx in my day was like they're all plain clothes nuns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, the Irish girls, they look like their legs run upside down. You know? Tough. Yeah, <laughs> tough, 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 yeah. tough. You got a little touch peepee in the back of the car, you were a star. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. A long way from there, though. Hard living, hard living. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When I got to Vietnam, it was a whole different. Women were four dollars a piece. Prostitutes were four dollars a piece. That. Give me that. Where? Yeah. Give me three a day. Four Can we go back to those prices? <laughs> Come on, man. That's not buying sex. That's a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I gotta tell you, man. I thought for a while I was bisexual. That's all I did is buy sex. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, yo, bring that it. was done. That bring was done. Now I'm, I'm a married man, Frank. I'm, I, I sit home. I read Heidi. I embroider. You know, I'm very, I'm different. Hey, try, try the veal. <laughs> I'm here all week. Try the veal. So was well, let's first, get back to our guest. Was your first break for your love? Uh, that was my first regular gig. Was for your love? Yeah, I. Uh, 
uh, my senior year in college, I uh, I got a small part in the movie Crimson Tide, and so that was nice. And I got to uh, even in college, I got to work on um, uh, a Martin. I did a, right. uh, an episode of Martin, so it was, I was doing a couple things, doing some commercials. But For Your Love was definitely my first regular gig, and that was a what a five year gig. That was four years. Four we started years. on NBC, and then we went to the WB for three years. Well, Crimson yeah. Tide, and you were uh, when you did Crimson Tide, you were just starting out, so you were you had a bit part in that, but you were working yeah. with a couple of heavyweights there. You were working with Denzel and, and, and Ackman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy because I got an uh, a call for an audition on Tuesday night, and um, uh, what did they say? They said an actor's being replaced. Go down to the set. They're auditioning people. I was like, okay, so. Uh, Wednesday morning, I'll go down there first thing, and I'm auditioning with maybe 10 to 15 other guys. And uh, throughout the process, you know, they decided on me, and I was like, great. Uh, two hours later, I'm sitting in the, the makeup chair with Gene Hackman. Like, it, it just, like, was crazy. <laughs> wow, All of it, like a whirlwind. And I, I was just amazed, blown away, you know. And then to be on the set with those, with those guys and watch them do their thing, you know, still inspiring. Oh, that's great, man! Yeah. It's got to be. That's got to be a thrill when you just all of a sudden you're there. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Fun, it's funny how one phone call can change your life. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Gandolfini was on that uh, on the really? set and on, in that movie as well. There, you know, it was a couple of people I was blessed to work with during that. Yeah, and I only worked on it for a week. But that call just out of the blue, right? They said somebody dropped out. Come on down. Well, your, your agent called you. Yeah, the agent. Yeah, yeah, the agent called. Said it. I have a manager at the time and an agent, and so they told me to go down. And then you got For Your Love. Why don't you tell us about the process leading up to For Your Love? And I think we got a picture of the cast of For Your Love. I would love to see that. These are good days, Frank Pace. We was rocking it, baby boy. We were rocking We was rocking it. Look at that. Ah! Love them all. What a great experience. Didi Adolphe, D.W., James, Tamara. The indomitable and Holly Robinson. Holly Pete. Robinson. Come on, Pete. forget it. Holly Robinson Pete, who was announced yesterday. Or last week is getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh, that's great! I'll be there for that. So we'll have to go. Oh uh, yeah, of course, because she was a star already. She when was the For Your Love was going. That was her third show. Yeah, I mean, she had been on uh, nine 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 oh two. Was it no, nine oh two? Yeah, no, no. Uh, the the twenty one Jump Street. Twenty one. Hanging with Mr. Cooper. She had two shows. Twenty one Jump Street for f five years yeah. or six years. Oh, yeah. tw uh, hanging with Mr. Cooper for six years or so, and then. Yeah. For your love for four years. Yeah, and, and Billy O, she took a, a somebody so green like myself right under her wing. Was warm from day one, day one to the last day we worked together, and we're still we're still friendly. And I love her. I know I still have love and respect for her. Like I'm just amazed by her, her warmth and generosity. So she was one of the kindest people you ever worked yeah. with. Yeah, and that was like my first real experience. You know, like I said, because it was my first regular gig, and I don't know. She set the bar high with that. And how how did the interview? Pro how was the interview process, or audition process on that? come about you know I, I remember that it was it was done at warner brothers because I, I guess they had uh, some partnership with warner brothers uh, whatever and i remember i uh there was they were casting a bunch of shows in a hallway and i was actually sitting uh waiting to audition for another show and i believe uh i forget the casting director Tony the maybe, maybe it was tony tony uh, had maybe remembered me from an, uh, some other auditioning i was doing he said hey james we're, we're casting for this show why don't you read this? And so it was almost a cold read, my first audition. So I, I you know, I was there for something else, but I, I read the the, the, the the sides and I went in and uh, we just sort of sparked. And then uh, the the next audition was with Holly. So it was over the chemistry read. And we fortunately had, I think, chemistry, like good chemistry right away. And so that's sort of. And that was you know, legit. Kind of, it turned out to be legit chemistry. Yeah, that wasn't yeah, manufactured. Yeah, yeah. And, you also, and you also had uh, chemistry with Sister Lee, Yvette. Lee Bowser. Oh, no, Lee Bowser. Come on, that's the godmother right there. Yeah, she uh, <laughs> she put me on. Yeah, she's amazing. Like what she established too and created on that set with that warmth and that that appeal. Like you know this 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 beautiful cast. You know you got this diverse cast putting it out there. And I don't know, it's something I'm still proud of. Now, today. Was she the director or the producer? She's, a, she's a creator. She's a writer. Creator. She's a creator. She was the creator. Yeah, yeah, she was executive, executive producer. producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. That's correct. And just to show, you know, brown people, brown skin folks loving each other, respecting each other, having a good time with each other, and and, and being more than servants or exactly, so, so exactly. Yeah, I think you were a lawyer, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. A lawyer that was in love, you know, and devoted to his wife. And these are images that I still support, and I'm grateful to have. I play so yeah, it's, it's great. And her son Drew is in the College World Series this week in nice. o in Omaha, Nebraska. Look at that! So she's up there sporting her red shoes and being the loudest person in the audience. That's what she does. That's what she does. Yeah, yep. mama. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I was hearing that he's uh, excelling at that. That's great. He's a six foot four third ba third baseman. Beast. 
He's That's a six foot four, one hundred ninety pounds. How tall are you, Billy? Five eleven. Okay, all right, sizable. Yeah, yeah I'm Frankie. Right. What you five four? Were you know? You know? You said, oh, <laughs> oh <okay>. jokes! Hey, <laughs> oh, hey, come on, man. We went, we went from being the king to <laughs> the, the king. The butt of, the butt of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the kings are often the most diminutive one, right? <laughs> the question is, how tall are you when you stand on your wallet, Frank? That's the big hey, 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 Yo, Billy, come on. I shrink when I get out of the wall. I got it. <laughs> I lost a little thin. A lot shorter since we've been since I've been partnered with you. <laughs> no, he he I me. never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> he hit me with that frugal shot, so I had to come back. That's <laughs> right. It took a little while. But I'm not 5'4". You are frugal. <laughs> I think frugal is a nice way of saying it was cheap. Food is a nice way to say you a cheap yeah, prick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's yeah. a cheap prick. I like to think I've become more generous, but when it comes to me, I'm still frugal. <laughs> well, you're smart enough, man. In this racket, like you said, like probably the steadiest gig you had was for your love. Right? Yeah, you knew every week you were getting a yeah, paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Well, that has to be a relief. It is. It is. It is. It is a nice sort of comfort. I mean, we should, at the end of the season, you got to see if oh, we're going to get picked up or whatever. But once you get into the season, there's a there's a sort of an element of comfort there and reliability that feels good. You well, know, you know having, having a place to go. Yeah, yeah, having a place to go. But then you almost immediately went from for your love into in Las Vegas, didn't you? Yeah, I'm a super talent, Frank Pace. I thought <laughs> people were so Hollywood needed me to have one another show, and I, I was willing to answer the and call. And I thank you for be, making your 150th podcast appearance today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, that's a good podcast. one. Podcast. <laughs> He's the man. He's no, the man. I'm going to walk away from it after this one, baby. I'm going to get better. What are you saying? Come on. So uh, on, on, on Las Vegas... Uh, you were working with my good friend Nikki Cox. Yeah. And uh, you were working with a lot of talented people there as well. Yeah. Um, did you shoot that in Las Vegas or you shot that in in L.A. and just went to Vegas once or twice a season? The first two seasons, we shot a lot in Vegas. We were at the Mandalay a lot. We were at the Green Valley Ranch and Resort a lot. Uh, and then, you know, after the show sort of took off, they built a replicate casino here in uh, Culver Studios. And um, we had this this huge, amazing set, this casino that felt so real in it. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. That is Mandalay Bay, yeah. isn't it? Was that picture taken at Mandalay Bay? I think Bay? so. On the it, roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I did comedy there one time in that room. See, I, I can't believe that, really. Honestly, and, and this cat here and this guy is here were the two biggest reasons why I wanted to do this show right there. Because I was wow. a big fan of Nikki, her talent and her physical beauty. And then, you know, the work with The Godfather. I was like, I really wanted to do this show. So And Josh Humel's not a... Not chop. I didn't know anything about him then. He's, but uh, I got to know him. And Josh is, yeah, he's a stand-up kid. Well, you made him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was so heavy. I had to carry that dude for How five seasons. How many years on, on this show, Jay? We got to do five seasons. Five that. seasons? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's great. Yeah, it was a great run. It really yeah. was. And it, it stopped uh, prematurely because of the writer strike. Like, we were we were set to uh, f at least finish the last season, but it, it, uh, the writer strike stopped us. And wow. so we left with this terrible sort of uh, uh, unended... Uh, not unresolved story uh, series, and uh, I still feel for the, the audience that you know enjoys the show because of it. It's terrible. And yeah, there's so many uncontrollables, in it. right? There's so many uncontrollables. Yeah, right, you're, right. You're just, you're just fate. Yeah. I hope you settle a lot of my money when you're out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you made a lot of bills. Take care of it. Yeah. Let's see if they're managing it right. You know what? <laughs> Yo, man, the temptation. Talk yeah, I about recognized it. that room. I actually did comedy in that room. That's why I knew you did. It was like at the penthouse, like up in Manhattan. Yeah, like, there there you very go. top there floor. You go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I was over my head then. I was yeah. over my head then. I thought about jumping off the Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's cool, man. So get to work with Jimmy Kahn, and you said he was a sweetheart. He no, a sweetheart no, 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 no. Yeah, but yeah. intimidating. What kind of, what, yeah, what, yeah, that range. Can you tell us a good James Kahn story? You know, uh, no. Just I'm, to, I'm a terrible storyteller. To the mic. Uh, me? Yeah, the mic. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, yeah. coming up here. Yeah. He uh, likes Jimmy you know, or he likes James? He's I like a, you. He's a Jimmy guy, right? Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a great storyteller. And so, no. I, I don't have any. I'm just telling you every day. Was a it was a crack up, and the dude is a he, and he's a real talent too. Like he's a a great actor. Like he really has a sense of story, and I don't know, he's good. I, I'm gonna tell you a Jimmy Conn story. Nice. Both is. I actually saw Jimmy Conn on a talk show, some talk show. And he was telling a joke, real quick joke. Yeah. Jimmy Conn. This is Jimmy Conn talking, not me. Yeah. He says this guy walking down the road. He sees a guy with a tree legged pig. And he says to the guy, "What's the story with the pig with the tree legs?" He goes, "Pig, pig. You see this pig? You see the house up there?" 
He goes, I had a dirt farm. He says, see that big mansion? This pig scratched on the, on the dirt, discovered oil. Now I'm the richest man in the whole state. That's because of this pig. The guy says, yeah, that's remarkable. But why has he got three legs? He goes, three legs? Let me tell you something about this pig. He says, Mike, my house is on fire. This pig ran into the house, woke up all my children, woke up my wife, saved my whole family. That's this pig right here. He says, yeah, that's a hell of a pig, but why does it got three legs? He says, you don't eat a pig like this all the way. I remember that joke. I remember that joke. I remember that joke. I remember the joke to this day. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. You know, that just that did jog uh, uh, a memory. Um, I remember um, I'm telling um, Jimmy, uh, we, we, it might have been the, the second season, uh, and I just met a, a goddess in uh, Phoenix and uh, who I was just smitten with, and uh, she was coming in L.A. Uh, to visit me, and I was like, you know, talking to Josh and Jimmy. I was like, yo, I want to impress her. What what can I do? And Jimmy put me on. He recommends this restaurant on La Siena at the time to take her to. And so I go, okay. I take her to uh, this restaurant on his recommendation. We're having a great time. And then dessert comes out. We didn't order dessert. And uh, it comes out, and, and, and it's a cake. And on the cake, uh, it's, uh, I love you. Will you marry me, or something like that? <laughs> like Jimmy sent out, like like as if I had was proposing to this young lady. Jimmy, I love it. yo, and so we're looking, we're both looking at the dessert, like yo, what I is mean, this? Oh, and it was Jimmy that. Uh, That's so New York, yeah, man. It was so dope. Break your balls. That's it was great. so dope. Yeah, yeah. That's great, man. That yeah, is yeah. A great so he's, he's that kind of funny dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's a show of affection. You broke yeah, your yeah, balls. Yeah. That's that's. No, nah, I got mad love for him. I got mad love for because honestly, too, there was a uh, a more you know sort of serious note. I, I lost my my sister passed when she was thirty four years of age. Uh, we were shooting a pilot for this show, and so um, you know I was going through that. My family was uh, you know I was going through that. We were getting through it. So it was like the second or third season, and um, a storyline had come up. And uh, it reminded me of my sister. And we're working on the day. It was just Jimmy and I on set. Um, and we're working. And I, I started getting emotional to the point where it was I was un it was uncontrolled. I couldn't stop my emotion. So we had to shut down production. And I'm just in the trailer, just emotional, emotional, emotional. And I remember that it was raining, like torrential rain that day. And uh, Jimmy comes over to the trailer. He's like, you know what? We're going to leave work. We're leaving work. And he takes me over to uh, a restaurant on Mulholland near where he lives. And uh, he just took me out to a dinner. He said, listen, I lost my sister, too. I know what you're going through. And he just sat with me for that evening. We had a meal and just chopped it up. I mean, I can get emotional thinking about this kid right now. He's, You know, he's that kind of real, you know, real, real tender heart dude. As I know well, the you know? type. I know the type. <laughs> right face. Yeah. I know the type. So that's, uh, that's one of the stories that, uh, two of the stories that I love about that young man. And you, you did me a couple of solids once, uh, twice. Once on uh, Suddenly Susan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and also on George, George Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, come on, man. That was you doing me a solid. Yeah. That was lovely working with Brooke. You know, I got to work with her again uh, with Yvette Lee Bowser in Lipstick Jungle. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I think uh, Yvette was at least producing on that. And that was nice. Brooke Shield was always dope. And, and, and George Lopez uh, was fun as well. Wasn't um, Sandra Bullock a part of that as, as well? She was. Yeah. She was. Yeah. Uh, was she producing that show for Trust me, dropping names. Yeah, she, was of George she, she was an executive producer because uh -huh. she, she discovered George. Oh, wow. wow. Wow, nice. Well, her talent scout discovered George. He said, come see George. And she saw George and she said, oh, let's do a show. Got to get him out there. Well. Good on her. The right yep. person seeing you. That's yep. another thing, yeah. right? The, yeah, that how, helps. How, how many people see you? It's the right person. Yeah, seeing that you. helps. Yep. Uh, I, I, I've stayed close with Brooke. Oh, nice. Obviously, she wrote the forward to our book, If These Lips Could Talk. Uh, and I worked with her again in 2018 when we revamped, we brought back Murphy Brown in New York. Oh, great. So I went to New York and produced that show, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah, she's solid. Solid, solid, solid. solid. So after, after Las Vegas came your next steady gig? Uh, what was that? Uh, I think Uncle Buck. Uh, no, I think before Uncle Yeah, I think it was. No, no, no. Uh, it was a show that. Good yeah, job. maybe it was Uncle. No, it was a. Uh, I want to mention he's Minute got, Work. Minute got, Work. He's got, so, he's got so much work. Yeah, yeah, he's, no, got no, no, no. he's got so much. 
I'm just sort of if losing I, track right now, but I think I, it was if minute I, work. If I, if I had his money, I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> his credit's read like a petition. <laughs> oh, I see his names. Come on, I'm trying to work hard like you two. You three. Forgive me, D. I see you over there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was minute work. We got to hop you know, on that. You know, he came down there with the D. You didn't yeah. call him Derek. He called him D right away. You see that? That's what we got to do. We got to <laughs> We got to go with the jogger. Come AD. on, man. AD. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Two seasons. Uh, the late great Jamie Tarsus was a, 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 I think a showrunner in that, and with Brecken Meyer, who is somebody I enjoy and really love his writing style, and that was great. That was great to do. We did that for TBS, and then I think we did Uncle Buck for ABC, and that was cool. Got to work with the guy that's near Long and Mike Epps, who's a crack up, and uh, yeah, yeah. My uh, Kevin Meany played Uncle Buck the first time around. The white Uncle Buck. He he played Uncle Buck. No, I thought it was um, Candy, John Candy. John Candy was in a movie. Okay. In the first inversion of Uncle Buck on TV. Oh, funny. Kevin Meany oh, played, funny. Uh, played Uncle Buck. I didn't know this. I didn't, I didn't, what, what was the, yeah. the, t the television version of it? 1992, 93 on CBS. Oh, wow. It lasted one season. How long years last? One season. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should remake it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they should remake all the spying actors out of the same way. Or well, maybe just remake it and call it Rocky. <laughs> just when you guarantee 37 seasons. They'll probably, they'll probably remake it as a Latino version. Uncle Buck yeah, yeah. or something like that. Something. With yeah, George yeah. Lopez. They got to do something. Yeah, Theo Buck. I guess, yeah. yeah. Well, how about your boxer, too? Well, you like to throw your hands around. Yeah, no, That's no, great. just one. Just one. That, that lasted a season, too. I got yeah. canceled after that. <laughs> that was uh, when I was studying over there in uh, England. Um, they had a little boxing club. I was like, you know, I'm a, I, I was, grew up watching you know, Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad right, Ali, sure. and I love this sport. And, uh, you know, uh, Hagler and Hearn. So I said, let me, uh, you know, let me get my hands at it. And uh, amateur fight, I did win. And uh, I, re I walked away from the game. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like jumping out of a plane. I did it. I did it, yeah. I did it I once. Did it. I did it. I'm cool. I, I said I was going to do it. I'm defeated, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Take that Rocky Marciano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 59 and 0. Big deal. Come on, 1 and 0, baby. Just keep it nice and clean. <laughs> And uh, you, you do some work for sickle cell too. That's kind of admirable. Yeah, That's I got right. a chosen brother who's been afflicted with it, you know, his whole life. And, uh, it's tough to see him struggle with, you know, uh, fortunately, he's doing his best to be healthy and stuff right now. And he's he's in his late 40s uh, now. and He's still living with it. And, and that's even sort of like rare for somebody dealing with that. What are the symptoms? Like this, that he just has what, what does it do to you? Excruciating pain all over his body. He describes it to me as if like I, I, little ice sickle, like ice needles are in your veins all over your body. All and the it's time. debilitating. Like he can't move. You know, he just... It, 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 yeah. It's paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, yeah. it's just too much pain. And, and of course, just... the pain is relentless. He doesn't mm -hmm. get any break. No mm -hmm. sleep at night. No nothing. It's and there's just... nothing for it. And so he'll get painkillers. There's nothing kind for of, it. There's nothing for it. He'll get painkillers and, and, you know, just wait for it to pass. And it'll, it'll sometimes take three or four days. And, you know, these episodes can happen maybe, you know, five to eight times a year. Wow. And it's tough stuff. Wow. Yeah. And, and he has no particular trigger about it. It's just comes on it's genetic i would imagine I, I think so yeah because his brother had it as well and um maybe maybe one of his parents uh well there ain't no good way to die i mean unless you got a smile on your face and you're going out in the saddle or something yeah. like that but uh yeah I, that, that does that's got to be a horrible horrible disease no nah, it's tough it's tough i definitely want us to figure it out because a lot of people especially in the brown skin community are dealing with it and uh you know we got smart folks out there doing things yeah. so let's, let's get on that one well one smart folk Got hooked up in the Blue Buds uh, for a while. James Azure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dope. Got to work with the legend known as Tom Selleck up there. Yeah, and, uh, well, I, I want to ask you. Uh, you were with Bridget Monaghan primarily. Hey, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, did you actually work with Tom Selleck? Not on that show. I know. Because oh. I, I, people don't realize you were on a show with Tom Selleck for two years. You probably never did a scene with Tom right, Selleck. Right, right. Uh, man, you know, I got to work with the lovely Bridget. Uh, she was super dope. Like we got to be sort of partners in crime for that my my stint on that show, and she was uh, also warm and welcoming and like fun to work with. Uh, but I did get to work with Tom Selleck. He did the last year of Las Vegas. Oh, did he? Yeah, because when Jimmy Conn left, Tom Selleck uh, came in, so I I got to know him that way. But um, it was nice to sort of reunite with him on the set of Blue Bloods, and he. And, and talking about, like, he's been working for decades, yeah. decades, decades. Just a stellar career. 
And it's and day one when I hit the set on Blue Bloods, we didn't have anything to do together, but he was just warm and welcoming and just like a, just a really, I don't know, lovely presence, lovely force. He explained to Billy how you could work on a show for two years and never do a scene with Tom Selleck. Just different storylines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, our, our stuff was never connected to what his storyline was. Yeah, because we I was sort of a detective working with her and. Our stuff was, yeah, all independent. Of Big. It's almost yeah. like being on an aircraft carrier and not yeah. seeing somebody for three years. Absolutely. Ago. Absolutely. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. That's remarkable. Yeah, yeah. And who, what's uh, the guy in the middle's name? I forget. That, he's a Wahlberg. I yeah, believe Johnny it's, Wahlberg? Uh, yeah, he was also fun to work with. And this kid, too, I forget his name, too, but, you know, he's a he's a legend in the game, too. And I like this. Johnny Wahlberg sort of reminds me of he could have been James Conn's son. <laughs> he does have that sort of grittiness sort of about that, him. That same thing. Thing, sort of, like, yeah. he's sort of like James Gunn's real son, who was in Hawaii Five O, the reincarnation. <laughs> right, same, same kind of guy, same kind of attitude. Yeah, same kind of kind of neighborhood kid, tough, smart. Yep. Yeah, what yeah, was yeah. your favorite show to work on? The one that started you, the one that launched the next you? one. Yeah, before, yeah, now, now, before you love was, I mean, it was such a blessing. We got to work with the great Bar uh, Barnett Kelman, who also just sort of like, put us in the right direction. And um, I don't know, that just you know helped. It that me a good so it's like it's like your first big Bar one. The one Bar Barnett yeah. was the director, and the joke was we called him the the Godfather of Soul, yes. because he knew nothing of black about black culture at all. <laughs> <laughs> was he the rabbi of soul? Oh, oh, he yeah. rabbi, yeah. the rabbi, rabbi of soul. The rabbi of soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he knew nothing. <laughs> when when uh, what's his name? Uh, the the great black singer who passed away. Yeah. Uh, Harry Belafonte. No, no, no. He, Luther Vandross? No. Oh. Just recently passed? No, no. And uh, During the show. I, you know, I, I want to say, give me that A Claire. But he was a heavy set guy. Because uh, that's, that's a joke that Jay Thomas used to do. Uh, that's funny. I forget. Hey, go, never going to give it up? No, oh, Barry White. Barry White. Barry White. Yeah. White. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When, when Barry White passed away, yeah. everybody was talking about it at the table reading. That's when everybody comes around the table to read the script. Yeah. And Barnett said, who's Barry White? Hilarious. Wow, Hilarious. who's Barry White? <laughs> that I was Barry White, Barry White. That's Barry White, Barry <laughs> I remember getting on a jet blue flight from New York to Miami, right? And uh, that's when they, you just pick your headphones out of a box, you know, and you put them on. Yeah. The stool. I said, this is really a good system. And I'm sitting back <laughs> and about to take off and I hear Barry White's voice. All right, sit back. Put your headphones on. Relax. I mean, it's the most soothing voice in the world, of Barry course. White. And they had a whole taping of him. Oh, I dope. said, this is brilliant, man. Brilliant. Yeah, that is dope. Relax you in the, in the seat. Right? Why have they stopped doing voice. that? That would make it a more it enjoyable brilliant. experience. It was yeah. brilliant. I said, look at that. What a perfect voice. You know? It would be great. I'm sure it costs a lot of money. Yeah, you know? Come on. Uh, yeah. They got the money somewhere. They got the money. <laughs> Come on. And now Barnett's the endowed uh, chairman of USC Comedy Department. The Robin Williams Endowed Chair oh, wow. of Comedy at USC dramatic school yeah cool. that rabbi yeah he's dear to me as well he's a beast he's a beast and he came kid. in and he directed the last murphy brown in 2018 oh nice so it was good to see him yeah there as well yeah well, we've talked about your past and all the great people you worked with and who you loved working with yeah come on give me the thing who's who was the pain in the prick there had to be somebody <laughs> out there there had to be somebody out there you said to myself now if it's going to cost you work you can clean it up yeah. but give me one somebody had hey to you did suddenly susan you could say kathy griffin because <laughs> because i've slammed her from here <laughs> over high water. Was mad warm too and fun as well um yeah, well, you, she probably thought you could do something for her. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that her MO? Yeah, yeah. she's real. She's, that's her MO, yeah. No, no, no. She came off really nice to me. Um, she's, I mean, she's funny, too. Like, she's a, she's a force. Um, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I just, nobody in particular. I just hate yeah. people who sort of, like, are more about sort of, like, looking or acting like a, an actor or, like, sort of putting on these airs, you know, yeah. instead of, like, you know, just doing the work and honoring everybody's role is important and we're all an ensemble. Let's just... You know, it's like a football team. One yeah. guy screws up, and it's the play's done. Yeah, that diva stuff. You know, whether male or female, you can leave that at home. Anybody you know. plays. Yeah, but you yeah. Could, you couldn't have been too happy with Adafi. No, because uh, I mean, it was Ad so Ad cold blooded. Ad Adafi was a, one of the other leads on uh, For Your Love. Yeah, he started with one name. He changed his name. Was his, his right? Yeah. Uh, but he wanted off the show. Yeah. And why don't you tell the story? To that particular, because I did, uh, we bonded. Like, uh, Adafi and I would, uh, 
we would spend time offset together all the time. We went on a couple of trips together, you know, went to New Orleans, had a great time there. Like, this is somebody I considered a friend. And uh, I, I remember the time we were going through a negotiation thing. We we're thinking about renegotiating the, uh, the friends thing, how they all unify. Yeah, 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 and let's go back in and get some more money. So we started on that, and we, all, we, we felt like we were sort of a unified front, but then there was very little communication in between our, our individual representation. And so our communication sort of broke down. And in addition to that, we we weren't like a juggernaut like Friends was. And so our leverage was, you know, minimal to none. And so at the end of the day, we decided, you know what, let's just go back. Let's honor our contracts and let's just, you know, do the work. And I guess, you know, you have to ask him. He had a different take on it. And he just separated himself from everybody and myself. And I was like, yo, Me this too. is somebody I love. Me too. I, and felt, I, still I, love felt, I felt the same way about him. Yeah. And then, like, I, I do remember, like, he left. On his last show that he did to honor his contract, he left. You know, we have a curtain call at the end of every show together, and uh, you know they bow, and he didn't even stay for the curtain call. He just left while the rest of us, you know, went out and took a bow. And it's like, and he's been never, never been seen on television since. Yeah, I don't understand. I have. I don't well, have walked no away for quite a bit of money, right? I mean, you've worked, you've got like one, one year contract. No, we're making, you know, yeah. we're making good money. I mean, we're making friends' money, but we're still making decent yeah. money. So yeah, and what was the what was the contract that he walked away from? A year, two years? And you guys were renewed for the following I think he, season? I or? think yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to finish out, yeah, that season. Just, just to see, I, I think he he made it so that he didn't even do the last show. He he made it so Warner Brothers fired him. Oh wow! With, you know, a couple of shows from the end. Oh wow! Okay, see this information. I don't know. I just know I was like, you know, disappointed by it, and, no, and yeah, I, I, I know he has his reasons. And if I if I heard him at that time, I apologize publicly, and I'll apologize to him if I ever see him again. If I if in my actions hurt him, because you know I, I want to take responsibility for any of that. But I know I loved what we had. Yep. And then we brought in uh, somebody else to replace him. Uh, Eugene Burr. Eugene Burr. Yeah. He's still a dear friend of mine. Uh, we actually live close together as well. Yeah, he played my uncle. <laughs> My uncle, who's actually younger than me in real life and much shorter than me, and uh, yeah, was my, uh, five foot four would be a stretch for Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, right. who would you like to work with that you haven't worked with? Is there anybody out there that you really like to work with? Uh, that you admire and say, "Man, I'd love to get a gig with him," just for the or her. Or her. Uh, you know what? I'm hard pressed to. Uh, I love um, who's of my favorite actors right now. You know, I love John Turturro. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd do anything with Meryl Streep just to be in the room. Yeah, yeah, you know, I got you. Yeah, come yeah. on. Um, yeah, those are two people. You know, well, Turturro right now has got a production company with Buscemi, with Steve Buscemi. I mean, that's the somebody else. Make Buscemi movie. is so yeah. entertaining. Well, Buscemi was a fireman down at Ted Truck. Oh, he was wow, a New York nice. City fireman yeah, for 10, 10 years. Look at him. Before he walked out and, uh, and, and took a shot at acting. Yeah. I didn't know him. Buscemi, but I knew his captain. His yeah. Captain said, you know, Steve, you ain't that good looking. <laughs> 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 you know, not for nothing, Steve. You ain't that good looking. You know, you got a pension here, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Did everything you could to talk about him. No, it's funny you say that because I had a similar sort of talk to, like, a uh, buddy had given, gotten me a job at UPS. And it's a good gig, you know. They make great money. He was like, and, and I had finished the probation period. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and pursue. He was like, you got, you got this, you got yeah, that. Yeah. Don't do. It. He might have said you're not good looking enough as well. Too. <laughs> and, you know, I try to brush that off. I uh, got a little cosmetic surgery, and I got it. You know? And so, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I get that talking to. And it's funny because my, you know, when I left the the military, my folks wanted me to stay in the military because you know it's a it's secure a gig, it's a good gig, gig, da, da, da. Yeah. But I just had no love for it, and so I, you know, I basically just started pursuing it on my own. And, Maybe Shimmy and I have that in common. But that dude's, his talent is, you know, Oh, yeah, he's off the charts. That yeah, great. And, and, and he's a real sweetheart, too. I mean, That's good he to comes hear. back to New York. Whenever he comes back, he goes to his old firehouse. Nice. Hangs out. Didn't he get to do something in that, um, oh, what was the, the Pete Davidson movie? Wasn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. He, he played he, the old timer in the Pete Davidson movie. Yeah. Yeah. Staten Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. he a fireman in that? Or yeah, he played the old timer. Oh, that's he, great. The, the old guy in, in the firehouse. Billy, Billy doesn't like that movie. Oh, no. I, I didn't like the movie. I didn't think the movie was that good. I mean, I thought the actors in it were good. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a big fan of Bill Burr. Bill Me Burr too. Was terrific in it. Miss Marissa Buscemi, of course, is Buscemi. Yeah. And uh, I think it was just a different era to me. You know, I'm okay. looking at the, the things that Davidson was talking about, smoking pot. Well, I've been smoking for <laughs> right. so Not that so much, but the yeah. uh, uh, the tattoos, you know, it's a different 
culture, like That's a different enough. age. You know, hey, look, everything is subjective. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. And you know that world too. I mean, yeah. so you, that's I why mean, when they did the pranks about opening up the water, and I'm saying, come on, that's that's pranks one on one. Yeah, you know what I mean? right, right. We're yeah, beyond yeah. that shit. I right. got stories about shit that we in the fry house that beyond belief. Right, right. right, right. So, but, but, but having said that, I love Bashevi. I think he's terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah terrific me too. Actor. Me too. And, uh, and like I said, he even after nine eleven, I don't know if you knew this, Frank. He rented a a big uh, loft down by Greenwich Village. And had all his Hollywood friends come and he put all, up for all the booze. He paid for all the booze, all the well, food. Shammy, come on, and man. Then first responders, cops, firemen, you're all welcome, you know? Yeah. Come and, on. And the Hollywood friends were there just so the firefighters and people could meet with him. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. So really a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. I actually worked on the dig for about three or four days with no uh, notoriety, nothing. Yeah, put on three. his old turnout coat and went down there into that mess. And work the day. That's what I mean. When somebody does something great from here on out, we got to say, you just boo shimmy it. You just boo shimmy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like we that. We got to change that. You know, D, hey, D, you boo shimmy You boo shimmy it. <laughs> <laughs> you <been shamed>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey, take it easy. You just got me a water. Take it easy. <laughs> now nah, you boo shimmy <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's the real deal. That's the real but deal, man. I'm a and I know that is a bad word to say about that. Dope, dope. Yeah, he's the real Come deal. on, man. Great I mean, guy. have that legacy in your life. That's huge. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. Yeah. So, so yeah, Jeffrey Wright, let me mention Jeffrey Wright here's another actor that I just like. Jeffrey Wright's a great like, guy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy talent. Yeah. So then you told us about the past things you do. What do you got coming up? I noticed you're working in a sh shot with uh, Andy Garcia, right? Yeah, right yeah, yeah. We, 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 you know, hopefully, I would love for somebody to pick it up, actually, because we just finished, like, Three weeks ago, we worked on a show called Rebel for ABC. Right. Uh, it's sort of that a, a pilot. Excuse no, me. we did. We were fortunate to do ten episodes. It was a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a uh, uh, the, the 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 great Katie, Katie Segal, Segal plays the life of Aaron Brockovich. You know, like the civil advocate, uh -huh. and uh, working with this old cast was though Tamla's over there again. Tamla Jones. Do you see Frank Face? You see her in the red jacket? I do see her. That's funny. Yeah, I got and we got to play siblings on this show. It's wow. amazing. And then working with Andy Garcia, you're talking about a complete actor, thorough, thorough, through and through, and still committed to the job. Never takes a down off, even when he's doing his off-camera work. He's still giving you a performance. He's giving you something to work with. I mean, this kid's a legend in the game, and he's still giving that kind of effort. I mean, I'm I'm inspired by him, and really? yeah. So hopefully, we can find a, a home someplace else. We'll see. Working with those kind of pros it makes you better, obviously. I mean, For me, like it you, does. Like you're talking about being a point guard distributing the ball. When you're working with guys like this, yeah, anyway, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Be... yeah, Katie and 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 Andy. I'm like, okay, I know these kids are bringing it every day. Katie's like, she's the number one on this drama, which means she works like 30 hours a day, and you know she's doing it seemingly effortless. But I know how much effort it takes. She's got to carry so much dialogue, do so much as an actress, and it's like. It makes it look easy, and I'm like, wow, she's she's a real deal. So, real like talent. Frank talks about on Murphy Brown, that Candace is in ninety percent of the scenes. Yeah. So the weight is on her shoulders. No, yeah, and that kind of heavyweight. I mean, it's it's hard to measure that that the amount of energy it takes to do so. Also, with Katie, Katie is such a good actress. She went from married with children mm -hmm. to Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you cannot. Get, that's some stress. <laughs> right. You cannot get that's amazing. More than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, you know about her singing background. This was yes. Amazing. No, she was no I didn't backup, know that. She's a backup singer to Med Bette Midler. Yes. Is that right? Yes, like a real deal rock and roller. Yes, he yeah, was. Right. I screw like that. a backup singer. You know, it's the Who? way I screw. I screw <laughs> like a backup singer. <laughs> <laughs> you should make a backup. I'm one of the pips. I'm oh no! You just, just took me to those that five dollar Asian <laughs> video, dude. Four dollars. <laughs> <Four. laughs> hey, what are you trying to rip me off? Don't rip me off, man. Four. You're <laughs> like no deal. <laughs> <laughs> really How is Tamala doing? She's great. She's great. I, I'm scheduled to go see her later on today, man. Oh, so give like, me my best. I will too. Yeah. Hey, well, let's take a picture. Or yeah, for sure. yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, she had a good gig on uh, Castle. Castle. Yeah, she was doing that she, for many years. She was doing that for five or six or seven years. Yeah, and I'm, um, you know, speaking of carrying a, a heavy. A heavy load, pardon the, the expression, <laughs> on, uh, on the show. Like she's she's like um, Katie's, uh, you know, uh, partner in crime in this. So so, Tamla uh, uh, is also carrying a lot of weight, and I'm uh, doing a great job on the show. And like it's so it's so much fun to be working with her again. I would be interested to hear her take on. Hey, Dolphin. Dolphin. Yeah, of course. So she knew I'm closer than that because you know they played they had the love interest thing. 
I don't know, man. It, and, it, and why aren't they showing any more episodes of 40 Love? I don't know. But I, I maybe can do something about that now. Because Warner Brothers owns it. So I'm going to suggest that they put it on HBO. I would love that. How many people are listening to this out here? Let's let's get something. Let's get a movement. Let's get a A movement. Millions of people out there (laughs) putting it. That's right. (laughs) Put your pen to paper and make this happen. Let's make this happen. (laughs) But but Yvette and I, I I see Yvette a lot. I see Yvette quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, And I always go, here, take your little key. That that, (laughs) was right. Tablet that to to a dolphin in the pilot. She goes, here, take your little key. <laughs> so James, so, tell our listeners. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt your thing. Tell our listeners what's the status now. You, you got to wait. You made you cut ten episodes of yeah, this. Yeah, and they I, aired them all. And ABC already dropped it. They've already passed on another season. So I think. Uh, the the creators of the show are maybe shopping around at different people. I mean, it happened to Four You Love. I'd love for it to happen again with this show, but you know, sometimes it's it's, it's hard to do. Yeah, and it probably a lot of your problems with that will become actor availability. Like Andy's right. working all the time, yeah. so as as soon as his deal is up, yeah. The be extension gone. deal is up. He's going to be gone. That makes sense. And, yeah. and probably Katie, too, and probably, you know, a lot yeah. of the other people. Yeah, yeah. And, of so. course, if they get a great deal, the network would be obliged to have to match that to lure them back right. or whatever. Right, right, right. So the likelihood thins. Is that right, Frank? It's likely. It's tough. Likely. I mean, we were blessed yeah. when NBC dropped For Your Love and WB picked it up. Yeah. That's so one, of the, one of the few times that I've heard of that ever happening. And no, it was so sweet. It was relatively seamless because we stayed on the same stage, stayed on the same studio. Yep. It was like, it was great. Nothing really changed. Nothing really changed. It was great. Yeah. So then you did Divorced? Oh, yeah. Divorced. I got to do that with, uh, yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker? Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Keep the hits coming. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Got to go out there. And who was the, the I mean, co-star in that? Thomas Hayden Church? What is Chuck? Thomas Hayden Church? Yeah, is that isn't Thomas yeah, Hayden Church? Yeah, yeah. This Thomas dude Hayden is Church. hilarious. This dude's a talent and a funny, funny, funny. Yeah, he was in uh, Wings, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now I got the face. And um, uh, Side, Side, Sideways. Remember the, the, the yeah. movie about yeah, 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 yeah. It was terrific. With Paul Giamatti. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Crazy movie. good flick. About yeah, yeah. the wine, the up Napa Valley. Yeah. Around. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I might give him another shout out, you got too. a picture of uh, Sarah Jessica with James? This I, was, I, I mean, I think you do. I do. This was hard to, you know, calm down the whole time because, you know, I mean, she, I mean, she's easy on the eyes. She's an uber talent, and it's like, you know, just to, you know, to be in it while she's doing her thing. Oh, I know that. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm having these sort of responses like I'm just sitting at home watching her on Sex in the City or right. some other, you know. Yes, and this isn't exactly Beauty and the Beast either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious because uh, James, well, you can, you can. Definitely carry your load with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, I'll take that, man. I'll and, take and, that. And I want to say that some people say that Sarah Jessica Parker has a horse face, so that if there was a beauty in well, the she beast, she can horse around with me anytime she wants. If she's there was a, a beauty she's in the beast, you'd be the beauty. <laughs> no, I, I respectfully disagree. This one was uh, also lovely and warm to work with. And uh, one of the th- I'm, 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 now I'm gonna now I'm gonna say something that is supposed to be private. She still um, uses a BlackBerry. <laughs> and I still use a BlackBerry. And I thought, that's a goddess. That's a supreme goddess. <laughs> <laughs> who's, willing, who's willing to go against the grain. She's frugal. <laughs> <laughs> there go. That might be it. <laughs> hey, it works. It's My BlackBerry a... still works. The BlackBerry still works. I got you. I'm with you 100%. Come on, man. I drive man. a Fiat, man. I got Come a Fiat. Come on, bring that. That's, that's a well yeah. built car, though. He looks at me and just shakes his head. I like, can't afford anything else. Thankful. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't worry about it. That's never... A good-looking car was never going to get me between the sheets. You know what I mean? There's only one way I was going to get between the sheets. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Four hours. <laughs> four hours. Four hours. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I told my wife, look, you got to hold my credit card. I can't get a hard on. Let's at least hold my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> you got to like, give me some incentive here. You know what I mean? Rip your nail on, smear the lipstick. You know what I mean? I need something cheap. That is beautiful. Give me cheap. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing really so 25 years you've been acting come on man that's unbelievable and you're going to pr- probably be acting for 25 more I'd that's you'll probably be acting I'd for be as long as you that. want I'd be good with that yeah I, I still enjoy it I'm still grateful to do it 
uh, you know, I'm finally doing podcasts that I really admire and enjoy. So <laughs> I feel like I'm just that Let's go so let's the pants. Let's right. Come on, man. Let's freeze that pants. I can't be able to get that get that show back out of here yet. This could be the springboard. This could be the springboard to your career, James. Oh, if any move can make it happen, it's this book right here. Yeah. This book over here. I like that. Is it that the Jeez, I'm in the garage with y'all. Well, come on now. Hey, this, is our, this is our studio. Right, let me know what I can't can say. What I can. oh, I'm just teasing. Okay. Right in front of the Maserati. The studio. That's right. Yeah, there's a Maserati here. It's not James. We have a live audience. They just know to be quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, live audience, for being quiet. here. Thank you, live audience. There are millions of people out there. <laughs> Look at that guy in the third row. Looks like he picks his teeth, this guy. I don't know. <laughs> you're funny you're funny but uh, yeah man that's great stuff uh so i mean obviously you want to keep working and you got to be flexible right this whole racket's about whole about being flexible isn't it it right? is it staying is. alive it is i mean I, I at this point i prefer to do uh, uh shows that i enjoy and i'm proud of and uh enjoy the work environment but as, you mean, you're not yeah. in control of that i mean yeah and so you look at the electric bill and you look at the script uh, right <laughs> i've definitely taken jobs just for yeah. you know the check because i want to keep the heat on so but i i prefer to you like shows like rebel that and for your love shows that i can be proud of yeah. and enjoy the work environment as well because let's have a good time while we're working well, hard. speaking yeah. of proud of i mean i i want to go back again to your uh to your your battle with Macduff, you know, in Shakespeare. What is your favorite Shakespearean yeah. play? What is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, really? You know yeah, what? I know. You're, you're, you're trying to test I my. Know, uh, my, my I'm trying to test the knowledge. I think I'm <laughs> my <laughs> college. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. favorite so girlfriend, girlfriend in college. It wasn't, no, my no. favorite girlfriend in college is whoever would lie down. Hey, hey, <laughs> I love you. Lie down. No, just lie down. No, I really love you. I love you. I really Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, yo. Especially coming out from that background you were telling me about with the hard leg nuns. Um, I would say, uh, what is it, Romeo and Joanne? I am not. Romeo and Joanne. I am not familiar with that much. No, yeah, it's, so uh, it would probably probably be Macbeth because I really got to delve into that one, you know, and you know, get behind the words and in between the words, and I I was really that's happy with stuff, that production. Man. That's hard yeah, stuff. It's challenging. It's challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah but broads, yeah, I guess. it does. It does. Uh, and uh, that, that reminds me because I feel like the the uh, I was so happy to be working with uh, Krista Vernoff on Rebel because she's a uh, prolific writer, a great writer, and I was challenged by her writing as well. And so it was nice to be, you know, be challenged by the work as well and and be able, and, and I think her writing is beautiful. And so it was good to be a part of it. Yeah. What else? Yo, well, brother, I'm just living in it. <laughs> um, you got any questions? Uh, Jamie Foxx parties. Never one invite. I guess I'm, you know, outside of the cool, uh, the cool crowd. All good. All good. But I... He just doesn't want to tell us. No, 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 no. I would tell you. <laughs> but I have bumped into that brother a couple of times. But we used to play in that basketball league. It was the oh. NBA Entertainment League. And so he was in Phoenix with us. And he was like, you know, always a, always a chill dude. Like really funny. Just a genuinely funny dude and, and friendly. So uh, that's all I know about Jamie. Who uh, would you like on your really team talented. on that NBA Entertainment League? Who was the one guy you'd like to have on your team? Uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Mike Westfall. He's, uh, he's the son of... Uh, Paul Westfall, well, Westfall? The, yeah, who uh, you know recently went to a better place, but Mike Westfall was my my shooter. Like you know, I, I bring it up the court and I needed a three, and I hit it. Mike Westfall, and he was like deadly. It was nice, yeah. Nailed. Paul was so quite nice. a shooter himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at USC, there was one year they were number two in the nation that he didn't win the ch conference championship, so they couldn't go to the NCAA. So. Oh wow, look at that. Yep. Paul was a beast too. He was a beast. So, yeah. so their sons in Phoenix, man, they love that team. Yeah, they're yeah. going crazy this year. It should be good. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, come yeah. Sunday, man. Looking forward to that. See that game last night. So good. It was unbelievable. It was, it was a great game. Like Thirty points. Yeah. At the half, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, down by yeah, down by fifty. The announcers are saying it could come back, and I'm going to listen to these guys. What, yeah. What was last night? Well, the Clippers played. Yeah, the, they uh, played at home. They were oh, down by just. This is Yeah. No, this is this is this airs Wednesday. <laughs> okay, this is oh, Ash Wednesday. Talking about but last you got your ashes the other day. You're talking about, you're talking about last night. All right, right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Happened to the we'll By the way, yes, every week. <laughs> it's got to be a reminder. He, he makes the same mistakes. <laughs> you remember how dumb I used to be? I'm week. better now. I'm better now. I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm not dumb like everybody says. I'm smart. Uh, yeah, so man, I mean, I, I got a kick out of reading about the 
the, 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 the one stint with the boxing and then basketball and the little yeah. football in high school. Billy, I'm trying to be like you. A little softball. You like a little yeah. softball. Softball, we got to win the championship. Did we beat Frazier that year? Because I remember a vet's uh, husband, uh, Kyle, going, down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> It would be Frazier for the uh, the championship. Yeah. Sounds like Marv Alpin, right? Back in the next quarter day. Down goes Frazier. Come on, give it up to Marv, too. He's about to walk away from he's the game. He's about to walk away. But he, come on tonight. Like, hey, there's there's hey, a guy hey. who's frugal enough to have the same rug he had 40 years ago. I, I, he's I, never, I, he's I, never I, updated his rug. That's the same rug. That's, that's in, amazing. That's incorrect. No, it is. He's had the same rug for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Respect is working for him. I used to love Marv. And Frazier's back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. He was a great announcer, man. Yeah, still, still is. Still, still is. Still is. Yeah, yeah. he's great. And his son is, and his grandson is, and his great grandson is. Yeah. They're all. Are they all in the game too? Well, I don't know about the great grandson, but they. His nice. son and his grandson. It's like the Billy Graham family, right? They just keep coming back. Yeah. Right? Keep speaking to the next guy. <laughs> I guess so. Or the Mannings, they're doing that now. Yeah, the Mannings are doing that. Oh, yeah. did, did you see that uh, promo for the uh, GE College Bowl? Mm -mm. With oh yeah, well, the, the Mannings have a third brother named Cooper. Okay. And he's sort of the third brother. He's the Fredo. <laughs> he's the Fredo of the family. I got you. He, he's, he, well, that, <laughs> that fulfills the... He, he's, he's the Fredo. That covers another the segment of the show. So in, in, in this GE College Bowl promo, the, the colleges play against colleges in a quiz show, like, like a quiz show, like Jeopardy or something. Okay. And Archie, uh, not Archie, um, Peyton, Peyton. Peyton's... The MC. Okay. And oh. his and Cooper is his sidekick. Okay. So they go through the entire promo and Cooper says nothing. He says, I'm here with my brother Cooper because it's C O O P E R, but that he, they pronounce it Cooper. Okay. I don't know what it is. And at the end of the at the end of the promo, he just Cooper says, Yeah. <laughs> That's the deal. Like Fredo. That's it. <laughs> he he became the Fredo of the family Amazing. in that very moment. He Amazing. became Fredo. You know, I used Lady to watch strings. You. Be quiet. You mentioned New Orleans before that you went down there for the party of yeah. with your buddy. Yeah. And uh, that's my home away from home. I love New Come Orleans. Come on, man. That's a great time. Come on. I've been there for the Jazz Festival, Essence yeah. Festival, Mardi Gras. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it even when there's nothing going on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The restaurants are less crowded. Yeah. I, I went there for two weeks in 1970 when I came back from Nam. I'd stay two and a half years. There you go. Yeah. It's that kind of town. You know, yeah, yeah. I said, this is it. I mean, what am I leaving here? For? No, absolutely, man. Because I, I was blessed to do some work. Uh, I was shooting a film there with Josh Jumel. And then I had a, a girlfriend at the time. She'd come and visit. And like we would, you know, a days off, we'd just go walking into town. And it'd be like one in the afternoon. There'd be some bar on some side street with a live band just yeah. giving oh, you that yeah. business, French man. Street. Just giving you that yeah, music. Yeah, true. And it's like. It will make maybe four or five people in the bar, but they are just rocking. It's like New Orleans is a special place. Well, when I lived in New Orleans, Archie was still the quarterback of the Saints, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> we used to go to Superdome, and pretty much they'd snap the ball, and the offensive line looked like wide receivers. They'd all go this way. <laughs> and 19 guys would chase Archie, and he'd be running around like, trying to stay alive. Right. But uh, so I, I remember his father. I was in uh, St. Martin with a bunch of firemen on a sailboat trip, mm -hmm. about eight of us. And uh, we're in uh, a tiki bar on the island of St. Martin. And we're having a couple of drinks. It was just after Eli had won the Super Bowl for the Giants. Oh, dope. When they beat the New England yeah. Patriots. And who walks in the door but Peyton Manning? Okay. With a, a woman, I assume, was his wife or his fiance, and another couple. Yeah. And, you know, we're eight firemen from New York. We all had a couple of beers. Yeah. Right away, hey, Peyton Manning, holy shit, look at this, Peyton Manning, let me buy you a drink, blah, 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 shake his hand, you know, we're all proud of Eli, he goes, well, how do you think I feel about Eli, he goes, you know, you're proud of him, yeah. my brother, he goes, yeah. of course I'm proud of him, you know, couldn't be nicer, man, nice. we brought him around, he brought us around, I signed don't. autographs, great guy, now, the point of the story, he sits down to eat, well, fellas, thanks a lot, nice meeting, he's had maybe two beers, yeah. he sits down, he's at the table, ordering dinner, and this woman comes charging up from the sand, you know, Peyton Manning, holy mackerel, Peyton Manning, I love Peyton Manning, can you do me a favor? Can I get my picture taken with you? He says, listen, lady, no disrespect. He says, I'll sign anything for you, but I, I've got a rule. After I've had two beers, no more pictures. Have <laughs> <I said, laughs> a good day. That's a smart thing. Yeah, I get that. I, 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 I get that. that. Brady should have had that rule when he got off the, <laughs> the Super Bowl yacht. Yo, <laughs> tossing that chover, I love that dude partying, man. And then, and then they carried him off the they carried him off the boat. No way. Oh yeah, they had, no way. They had <laughs> two guys making like it was him. <laughs> That's my boat. He, he, he looked like uh, transportation. My, my 
what, weekend with Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> he well, good on him, man. Bernie. Good How on smart him. is that, Peyton? Man? Get right? on I him. Mean, yeah, I mean, think about the amount of money you're talking about in the doors, but that guy's selling everything. Yeah, he's selling, right. He right. sells insurance. He's selling chicken. He's selling everything. Nah, and he's staying aware, just like he was in the pocket. Yeah, no, no. I see how this is all guy, playing. No, no, no. Too biz. Too no business. Business. Sorry. No, sign, no yeah. disrespect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's Smooth guy, but a nice guy. Sweet guy. Oh, it's good to hear. And I always like to hear that. You know, who's mm -hmm. the, who's the, who's the good guy? Who's the Prado? Who's the prick? Who's the yeah? Guy? I wish I can give you specifics, but like I said, I can only give you Jimmy. You don't want to burn any bridges either. That son of a bitch. I know mean, we're talking. Me, that this podcast wants the truth, and I can appreciate the way you guys are running here. But again. Yeah, nobody, you know, in particular. And I, you know, I hope to always be blessed like that because, again, I just want to work with, you know, yeah. good folks and let's, let's do great work and have a great and time stretch. doing it. And constantly stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. 25 years, man. Come on. Just getting started. Come on. Yeah, let's go work on a mic. Just getting started. Yeah. This is going to launch you. This is a big thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting that Academy Award. I just want to thank a make a mook of the mic. I'm over. I'm over. I'm over. Just so you know, I did turn down Joe Rogan this afternoon. I was, he had called for me to go over to Joe, and I was like, nah, nah, nah I'm going no. over. I'm, well, going, I'm going over to some real things. You just broke Derek's heart. Uh, <laughs> you just broke Derek's heart. Steve, You're not Steve, supposed Steve. to mention other podcasts. Oh, D, no, no. He, he's in love with Joe. He, wait, he's wait in a love minute. with Joe Rogan. D, D is in love with Joe Rogan. Where'd hey, that come that, from? That's the, that's the gold standard. I'm just, uh, you know, trying. <laughs> okay, respect. No, you yeah. got to give props to a success. We got more wires than Rogan. I guarantee there's more wires floating around here than Rogan's <laughs> Guarantee. That's hilarious. Hey, are, hey. James, are you getting the roles that, that like, have you always. In your career, you got twenty five years. Yeah, out. are you getting the roles that you want, and 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 are there some roles that you 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 wanted but you didn't get? Uh, you know, for the most part, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I am starting to think about. I remember uh, roles that are growing up that are big influences to me. Like I remember Michael Keaton and uh, Mr. Mom. Like I love that movie. And I love that whole vibe. So mm -hmm. I've yet to sort of do that, especially on a, on a feature level. So I can either do that on you know in features or television. Uh, Tom Hanks is another kid that I loved, you know, as you know, you know, growing up, and I, I love that sort of that light comedy, but they can give you that real, you know, genuine emotion as well. So this is something that I'm asking for, and you know, I hope to continue to do. Right. What and you then, got in the fire, James? What do you got? What do you got coming? What do you want up here? Unemployment. Not employment. Yeah. So yeah. any many of you out there that are watching and you got happen to be a producer or an executive producer and you need yeah. a gig, this is the man. Well, yeah. I recommended you for two roles this week. So. <laughs> I appreciate wow, that. How about yeah. this? Yeah. What about me? I'm smart. <laughs> I got talent. I'm, I'm so smart. Bad. I'm dumb like everybody says. Have four bucks, we'll travel. <laughs> Have four bucks, we'll travel. <laughs> Doesn't mean talent is yet. That's it, yo. That could be a name for a we'll, book. We'll, it, might be, it might be something in that. <laughs> we'll do a reality show. We'll give you four bucks and send you out to get laid. You see, you your you see some of those women for four bucks. Let me tell you something. Yeah. And that days I could do three or four a day without even blinking. Yeah. Now, yeah, I shut up. Oh, yeah, think about what four dollars yeah, yeah. gets you play. Oh, four dollars. Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was it like? So you started twenty five years ago, and you're you're roughly my age. So yes, you started you started as an AC cop, right? Oh, funny. Yeah, they, in, in, was in the OJ Simpson story. Yeah. And uh, I told everybody. I think that was the first film I worked on. I told everybody who could listen to me, you know, watch this movie, watch this movie. I'm in a minute, a minute. You know they cut my part. Oh, oh, I, I, I subjected the people I love to two hours of like a bad O.J. Simpson movie and uh, only to be cut out at the end. Wasn't but, that, that O.J. Simpson movie? Wasn't our last Fredo from Friends in that movie? Yeah. No, they redid it recently. Oh, I yeah. think it was great. Right. Yeah. I think it was, uh, yeah. you know, a better version of the one I did. The guy who played Ross, wasn't he in that? Yeah, yeah Schwimmer. Schwimmer, yeah. Schwimmer, Schwimmer, yeah. a better one. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, he's not afraid of friends. He's, 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 he's afraid, he's afraid of friends. friends. He's, he's, the, he's the guy up there that don't belong, you know? <laughs> Somebody's pitching up along Schwimmer. Oh, uh, no, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Schwimmer. Oh. But, uh, hmm, so he was in that movie, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, well, that was a pregnant pause. That was it, yeah. But we're going to honor it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, a moment oh, of so silence for Schwimmer. Okay, so so you grew up in L.A.? Did, born and raised. So what was the street cred like once you started acting? So so in your in the beginning of your career, so yeah. you, you you do your first thing, which you're cut from, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did you, did you, did you work um, regularly after that? No, uh, but I was fortunate to get gigs here and there. I was... Um, 
after college, I was substitute teaching for a year to kind of help wow, you know, to okay. eat and uh, keep the heat on. And um, then I, you know, I was doing commercials as well, mostly sports commercials. And then I would do um, guest spots on television shows. I remember doing Martin, Aaron, and uh, maybe a couple other things. So you know, just trying to piecemeal a, a career together. But right. you had, you were doing enough to be encouraged. Yeah, 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 yeah. And would you yeah. think that James, most of your work came from somebody seeing you on a show, or was it your agent pushing, or where would you, where did you think most of your work came from? Uh, to just stay alive, work. yeah, or just, just uh, yeah, uh, having the representation send me out. It's funny too because I remember I worked at the uh, the gym on USC at the, the Lion Center there, and uh, uh, you know between shifts we go upstairs and we play basketball a lot, and uh, I met a guy playing basketball. And we would play basketball together all the time. This guy out there listening, what's up, John? Uh, and he was one like uh, he, he was he was super cool dude. And he was like, you know what? I I I do sports commercials. I think you should meet uh, the agent that I that represents me. And I sort of met somebody through that, and that's how I got into SAG doing sports commercials. And so it's like. Is I don't that know. your agent now? You met no, 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 him, no, that, that you didn't switch agent, no. agents. Just yeah, that the sports agent stuff. Yeah, yeah, went to the you know left, but uh, but uh, but I did get a manager while I was working at uh, at USC and I'm uh, going to USC, and so uh, I'm still with that manager today. And so being in the right place at the right time again. Yeah, sure sometimes yeah. Now, but now you somebody says, "Get me James as you are." Everybody knows who you are. Some people do, and I, and I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's I like to nice. think, yeah, you know, I, want, I like to think, you know, you're happy with my product and what I give you. And so, you know, I'm going to give you my best. I know that whoever I work with. James, I think that's great. You've been great. So have you all. This and, has been dope. Any other thing you want to ask, James? Oh, well, man, I'm delighted to meet you. I'm delighted you came today. I mean, I've genuine pleasure meeting you, really. I you mean, too. Not, aside from the podcast. Yeah, it's nice thank to you, know you, you too, man. Nice to meet you. Well, so, James, now that you're here, we can start voting on those things we were talking about voting on. Because now I have equal representation. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's go. Dude, looking for a raise. That's right. Yeah. And let's hey, for a raise. It's an over to soda. <laughs> I'm going to get 80, 80 uh, acres in a mule. That's I, right. I can, 80 I, acres. I, I can uh -oh, unequivocally give you, I can double your salary. Perfect. Double. perfect. As a matter of fact, I'll triple your salary. No, I'll quadruple oh, no. it. If Look you'll take that. a check. Look at that. Take a check. I'll quadruple your salary. So we got we got some business to do first. Okay. Uh, before we say goodbye to James, uh, this week in history, I'll tell you what it was. Okay. Uh, this week in history, Warner, uh, gosh, I can't, uh, Schwerner, Goodman, and Cheney were killed in Mississippi. Uh, civil rights movement were killed in Mississippi on July, uh, June 21st, 2000, by, uh, 2000, 1964, and then it took 40 years for them to bring this. Killers to Justice? Yeah. Killers to Justice. So this is Mississippi Marsala was made after this, right? The yes. movie was made on this mm. premise, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that and, whole civil uh, rights thing, man, is absolutely... Uh, it's American like, justice. Yeah, it's yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of good work still to be done, man. Yeah, we still got work to do. Yep. Yeah. And we had, a, we had a Father's Day drawing for Rod Carew. Oh, hey. And the winner was, I just almost, I wanted to just say his... His email address. I'm not going to give you the Wait. whole email address. Oh, not yeah, not the whole thing. Not yeah. the whole. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I just <laughs> making sure. Who's the Fredo now? Not me. Not me. Trying to help. Uh, I said we were going to announce it, so uh, I don't know his name yet because we have contacted him, but it's TM Local One. So somebody's in a in a local number one. So I like a, a union man. He's a union man. Once upon a time and a half. <laughs> so, <laughs> Got to get a Rod Carew baseball to go out this way. Rod Carew autographed baseball just for tuning into our show. And, 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 and talk, signing up for the newscast. And signing up for your newscast. Yep. And uh, what, what, where do we go from there, Frank? I mean, uh, I think we go to the next movie that James is in. Or the next TV show. <laughs> we can sit by the TV. Or we can sit by the TV and watch the litany of good work that <laughs> James Dejure has done there in the last 25 years. You're all now delighted. Let's go. I like that. You are not write it? Now I'm delighted. Right? <laughs> say, with that, say goodnight, Billy. Good night, Billy. Good night, Derek D. Good night, James. Hey, James, again, thanks for coming, yeah, brother. Thank you. Keep acting and... Uh, do what you do for sickle cell. Let's you too. You too. Thank, Thank you, my you. friend. Thank you. Thank friend. you, King. Next week's guest, writer, producer, Chuck Tatum. Yeah, I'm going great.
see you next week.